Welcome back. So we got our Galactic Republic Squadron article up today. Uh, I'm going to go through all the cards right now and see what it looks like. First blush looks pretty good. Um, some better than others. Um, but we're going to start out with the Delta 7 Aether Sprite Squadron, which we've seen before. Adept 1, which lets you reroll one die when attacking. Counter 2. And... Um, Dodge one, which lets you reroll one die when defending. Now, so it's interesting. So we're going to see with the other Aether Sprites, with the other Delta Sevens, what transfers over here and what doesn't. Not everything does. So we have Luminara. Um, Luminara is um, three blue and a black for anti-squadron. Um, blue anti-ship. Um, she has Adept 1, so the same reroll when attacking. She has the counter 2. She does not have dodge, and I assume that's because Scatterace. So Scatterace is, you know, trying to make them burn those tokens, um, which is why they don't have dodge as well, which actually makes the generic a little bit more valuable. Um, 23 points, a little bit expensive. Her ability is when an enemy squadron at distance one is attacking a non-unique friendly squadron, the attack is treated as obstructed. I think that's really good. I think Luminara is really good. Um, you know, 23 points. I mean, any of these Jedi are going to be expensive to take, but I like her. Um, you know, she, she's kind of giving everyone else the NRA, which is pretty good. Santa Ray is one of the better Imperial squadrons, um, who when you attack her, she's treated as obstructed. Now, this is, um, it's a non-unique friendly squadron, so you can't do this to aces, but all of you generics, this is going to work with. Um, so you take Lumin Luminara with a bunch of generics, you know, whether it's the V19s or something else, um, take her with a bunch of the generics put her kind of in the middle and now everyone is harder to hit it doesn't affect luminara I mean, one um she's not unique or she is unique um so it's not going to affect herself she doesn't get her own ability she's just giving this to other um squadrons next one we got plo coon uh plo coon Plukun gets Adept 2, so a little bit of an increase on the Adept here, so a um, little bit better on the offensive. His dice are the same as um, Luminara's. While attacking, you can re reroll up to two dice. Also has counter 2. Um, 24 points, so again expensive. Um, and for Plukun's ability, non-unique friendly squadrons without counter at distance 1 gain counter one so this is okay i mean again so similar to luminara you put him in a ball of v19s or something like that and now he's giving them all counter so a little bit of defense um i like the adept too i think i might like luminara a little bit better than plo Koon, but um you know not bad plo Koon's good too then we have ahsoka um, Ahsoka, again, same dice, same speeds, same hull, um, Adept 1, Counter 2, gains Grit, I think I've talked about in my some of my other videos, Grit, I, it, it may be getting better, but it's kind of my least favorite of the squadron keywords, um, carries the least value to me, Grit lets you move if you are engaged by one or fewer so, only one enemy squadron. Um, and Ahsoka's ability is, after you move, you may choose another friendly squadron at distance 1. That squadron performs an attack against an enemy squadron at distance 1 uh, with an anti-squadron armament of two blue dice, even if it's already attacked. So, you're getting a little bit of a little burst here um, out of Ahsoka. So this does mean Ahsoka wants to move, which Grit is 
helping her with. Um, and I'm sure, you know, it's a combo type of a thing. But I've found in the past that grit is pretty easy, especially when we're going to be running as many squadrons as I think we're going to be running um, once Clone Wars comes out. It will be fairly easy to tie her down. But if you can keep her moving in some way, and we might see something a little bit later that is another way to keep her moving, but again, expensive, um, then she gets just a touch of extra burst damage that, she can do by letting another squadron near her throw a couple of blue, blue dice hopefully get a hit and then um she can attack she could attack and then move and then get some burst damage whichever it is so again good again all of these delta seven you know aces are expensive i expected it as such the generic is expensive for generic i mean they're jedi they have really good abilities you can't even take all of the uniques here so then we have kit fisto um kit fisto he's going to be our most expensive at 26 points um, adept 2 um counter 2 and intel so intel we think there's going to be a change to intel with the new rrg so it's a little hard to tell right now how good intel is going to be but intel in the past has given all enemy squadrons around you heavy allowing other squadrons to move so this could help ahsoka in theory but then you're spending over 50 points in squads and just two squads so we'll have to just see how that balances out his other ability is when you spend defense a defense token you may discard it if you do reduce the total damage by three instead of resolving that token's effect so you notice he's not a scatter ace um, I think so his ability is kind of in place of scatter I think his ability is probably a little bit worse than scatter so you're you're paying for the Intel here um, but I think his ability is a little bit worse than scatter because you have to discard and you're getting rid of three damage which in a lot of squadron anti-squadron attacks is you're not going to see more than that often you do occasionally um so it's like a scatter but it's like a discard scatter so we'll see i don't think his ability is why you're taking him you're taking him for the intel um but this is all going to depend on any changes to intel that are coming So then we have our ARC 170s. Uh, we have not seen anything about ARC 170s before. Speed 2 Hull 7. Uh, great Hull. Speed 2, I'm really down on Speed 2 squadrons. Um, things like the YV-666, the B-Wings. Speed 2 squadrons are really hard to push and keep engaged with, especially ships and you know here it's a bomber is, is it, i would say the b-wing is probably the closest thing to the arc 170 um three anti-squadron dice a red and two blue um it, it's it's okay i mean it's actually a little bit better than some bombers um but it, it you're not taking the arc 170 i don't think in order to attack squadrons um and you get two blue anti-ship that's really good um, we have bomber so our crits are gonna count and put crits to hull if you can get to hull um, and then counter one and cost 15 points um, in a lot of ways similar to b-wings um, down on the two speed I, I don't love that but we'll have to see because um, there is another bomber in here okay so our unique arc 170 is Ubal um, I assume that's how you pronounce that um, while attacking if you moved during this activation you may reroll up to two dice so that's pretty good especially if you can I like Ubal 
I don't like the speed two. I do like the fact so if you can get Uval one on one with a ship and you're able to keep up with that ship. So think like the Munificence. The Munificence are only speed two. He can probably keep up with the Munificent if he can um, keep from being engaged by other squadrons. And then he'll be able to move, throw his two blue dice, reroll anything that you don't like about it. That's pretty good. Um, he d it does with the anti-squadron. He does change out the red for a black, which is better. Um, 23 points. Expensive. Um, and we have another evade ace. Um, again, evade is something brand new to squadrons that we have not seen before. Um, so, and this evade, unlike the other one that we had seen um, already, is doesn't seem to have the other one there was an ability where it was going to be able to I believe it was the V19 ace that comes in the starter um, had an ability that was going to allow it to use the evade even if it wasn't at long range to get its ability here doesn't have anything to do with its ability so again what I'm thinking is if you can get this this one out and engaged with, um, you know, a Munificent far out from the center of the fight. And, um, you know, other Munificents are trying to shoot at it with the red dice, maybe. I don't know. I don't know how that, much that evade um, defense um, token is going to help it. But we'll see. Um, I don't mind Ubal. Again, speed 2, 23 points. We'll see. Um, our Y wings. Um, so the Y wings are also bombers. Speed three now. Speed three is better for a bomber. It, if you're new to the game, um, once you start playing, at least for me, I saw a huge difference between speed two and speed three squadrons. Speed three is workable. Speed two is really hard. Um, six hull, so you're gaining a speed, losing a hull compared to the ARC 170s. Fewer dice, only two dice in the anti squadron, one blue, one black, one black bomber. Um, so you do have the the couple of um, hit crit sides, so you can still get that two damage similar to the two blues, although you're relying on um, a single side to do that. Um, it does have heavy, so heavy. You, you're um, you don't prevent other squadrons from attacking and moving, so you can't lock down squadrons with a B-wing. But only ten points. I, I I'd probably, if I'm going to be taking bombers, prefer the Y-wing over the one Arc 170. I mean, the, there are reasons why the Arc 170 is more expensive, but I think I prefer the Y-Wing first blush. Then we have Anakin. So Anakin is our ace for the Y-Wings. I think we knew this or at least assumed it to be true. Um, speed and hull are the same. He does gain an anti-squadron dice. So we've got three blue for anti-squadron. He also gains an anti-ship dice. So instead of a black, he's got a red and a blue. Interesting choice. Chance for some burst damage there, but also, you know, chance to kind of whiff on it too, which I, I don't know, maybe that's kind of thematic. We'll see. Um, during his activation, you may spend one defense token to ignore engagement until the end of your activation. So that's interesting. That's that's new. I have to think about that one. One defense token to in ignore ignore engagement until the end of your activation. So I guess that means oh yeah, so you can move and shoot. Even if he's engaged with other squadrons, you can flip one of your defense tokens 
move, get out, go shoot at something else. That's pretty good. That's pretty good for a bomber. He has Adept 2, so while attacking, you can reroll two dice. That's really good for the bomber side of this. Um, he does get the heavy. I don't like when aces get the heavy, too. But, and 19 points. He's a pretty good bomber. I like Anakin. Um, I think I would try Anakin quite a bit because he's going to be able to get those bombing runs in um, and get two rerolls out of it. Anakin's good. I like him. Then we have our generic V19. I'm not going to go over that again. We already talked about that. But we do have um, another V19 Ace um, Kickback. Um, kickback, let's see. Yeah, sa same dice, same speed, same haul. Um, has Escort and Swarm, just like the regular V19. Has two braces. And after you perform an attack, you may move up to distance one even if you are engaged. So this one is interesting. I'm, it doesn't say anything about having to be activated in this. So I know usually it's not a rogue. We didn't see any rogues. There was no rogues in this. Um, I thought maybe some of the um, Jedi would be rogues, but right now Republic has no rogues. My question with this one is, so obviously if you activate them, you're going to be able to attack and then move one to get out of engagement if you want to. So that's pretty good. Um, yeah, it's, it's similar to stealth a little bit. Um, but my question is, is in order to get the ability, usually with the abilities, you don't have it, you just get it. Um, do you have to activate to get that ability? I would say first blush is that you don't, is that if you activate during the squadron phase, you're going to be able to shoot and move one, which would be pretty good. That would be a pretty good ability because you, if you're already in the squadron phase, you can shoot, move out of engagement, they can't shoot you back. So that would be pretty good. I just wanted to, and he's four points more than the generic. So that's the Galactic Republic squadrons. A lot that I like. Um, a lot of expensive squadrons. And this is what I expected. So I expected lots of expensive squadrons. Galactic Republic is going to have a little bit cheaper ships. A lot more expensive squadrons. Um, and if things hold true to what I expect, Separatists are going to have a little bit more expensive ships. But really cheap squadrons. Um, and that's kind of how it looks like things are being balanced here. I almost said FFG. I probably can still say that for a little bit. Um, but that's it for the Galactic Republic Squadrons. What do you think? Which ones are you going to run? Um, there's a couple I'm definitely going to try. I'm definitely not going to run all Jedi, though, because you're going to get four, maybe five squadrons out there. I'm not sure that that's going to be the way to go. But I think you're going to want to pick one and use that to help the rest. I don't think you're going to want to have multiple. Maybe two. Maybe try two. But generally speaking, I think you're going to have one Jedi to help out either your bombers or your V-19. Um, you know, just um, anti-squadron squadrons. And have them help out there. But comment below. Who do you like? Thank you very much. Hopefully we get a Separatist article soon, and we'll talk to you later.